I'd like you guys to buckle in, join me on a journey. You're, uh, you're on the border of Europe, um, and you hear the rattle of diesel engines, hear angry voices, you see treads turning on the horizon. You're not in Eastern Europe, you're in the Netherlands. An advanced, sustainable, and prosperous country, but appearances can be deceiving. And over the course of four years, a series of protests which have halted the country and captivated the world. The Dutch farmer protests were in response to the legislation around nitrogen use and the viability of agriculture. EU technocrats threatened to wield heavy-handed policy to achieve well-meaning reductions in nitrogen use. But they brought into question a culture's way of life that stretches back generations. <coughs> Who is right or wrong, I leave up to others. Rather, I want to highlight the wider problem. Two groups of people who simply cannot find common ground. Both are protagonists in their journey, but reality only has space for one. Policy is driven by those with no lived experience. So how did things get to this point? To find out, we've got a journey back about 500 years. We've seen many graphs tonight. Mine's the most important. <laughs> this is for me, the graph of our time. It tells the story of our shared history as a species. It also provokes thoughts for the future. Any guesses? A couple of hints? No? All right. <laughs> so this is the shift in human population from rural to urban centers. All right? The seeds for these protests were sown generations ago, and now they're being reaped. It remains to be seen how sustainable this graph can be going forward. It doesn't look very promising, but we'll see. Australia is a case in point. We're well more advanced along that curve, and today just 2% of our population is involved in agriculture. At the turn of the century, roughly one in four people were involved in agriculture. That meant that people fundamentally understood where their food came from, or they knew someone that did. This is not the case today. And that's made itself felt when our supply chain woes began. Food is just something that magically appears, and when it doesn't, can anyone remember the taste of cabbage in your zinger burger? Because I definitely do. <laughs> we in the urban core, we don't understand food production systems. We may theoretically understand them, but we don't live and breathe them. And thus, we don't grasp the intricacies, and there are many. Now, is that a problem? Not necessarily. Much like other things, a consequence of that most important graph is that we don't have to. More people mean more specialists, be it heart surgery, rocketry, finance. We delegate to specialists. We have dialogue with them. You talk to your accountant, you talk to your doctor, why not talk with your farmer? <coughs> What's missing is avenues for people to have dialogue with our primary producers, but for us ordinary people. As our population has become more urban, so too does discussion around sustainability exclude those on the margins. And this inevitably leads to a situation like the Netherlands. Two groups disconnected by a logistics network cannot find common ground. Why is it important? Knowing what we eat, how it's grown, it's critical, because there's always trade-offs to be made. It's a great deal more complex than just going organic, and I'd love to talk about this, but I've been banned from uh, doing it within five minutes. So we can best support those who do the growing by understanding their concerns. There's no shortcuts, and the only way to do this is through human relationships and conversations. Access to nutritious food is important not just for us, but globally. Most of the consumers of Australian agriculture reside overseas. 72% of what we produce is consumed overseas. And Australian agriculture supports up to 60 million people worldwide. And this iconic picture from 2011 was at the height of the Arab Spring. One of the things that spurred it on was the cost of grain, led to conflict and instability. So food security is critical, and decisions we make in Australia affect the whole world. How do we address this? For me, it's simple. I can't solve it, and no individual person can. But we need to have conversations with those who grow our food and our primary producers. We should get to know them. That's, that's the real message I want to say here. And with that in mind, I created my bottle action project called Campus to Country. It's simple, it takes a long-term view of things. We're not gonna solve that problem overnight. 12 students from varied backgrounds have spent time at Dukey, our regional campus, visit food production systems and have conversations with farmers. They walk away with a new perspective on food. Students today are really the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. We don't know how that graph will develop over time. But we should make sure that the mistakes made elsewhere aren't repeated in Australia. So if you are a student who'd like to join in for three days looking around 
rural Victoria stepping in mud in the middle of winter, please let me know. Have a chat to me afterwards, and there's a few spots left, so I'd love to have you along. Thank you.